All right, guys, welcome back to the fourth week of our project development course in Python. Crazy to think, but we are also making the four week, aka the one month mark in our project development course as well. Noticing we got a bunch of new people coming in today as well, which is awesome to see. Looks like the word has been spreading. So thanks for coming in. Hopefully at this point, you do have our Google Classroom code. If not, uh, just message me or log and we can get that towards your way. We post all of our information here, guys, including our code links, our recorded videos for you to reference. Uh, but yeah, once again, if you are new this course, you're wondering what this is all about. Uh, Lab, do you want to give a quick synopsis what we do? Yeah, definitely. So first of all, um, as you can see on, on, the, on the screen, project development in Python. We're going to be coding in Python, but um, the course is not just about learning Python. It's about creating projects in Python. And um, throughout the year, uh, we're going to create several projects from which the first project that we um, unanimously decided was to create Mastermind. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an old game that um, maybe your parents used to play um, when they were little, but it's a great um, opportunity for us to uh, write a program in Python and have fun while trying to um, play it ourselves. So Mastermind is the first uh, project that we're going to make, but that's not the last. So. If you guys have any ideas, um, any other projects uh, in mind, just feel free to throw out ideas and we will make sure that it's doable in Python, unlike uh, a, a game that was uh, suggested like Duck Duck Goose, although it's a great game, but um, something that is codable in Python would be better, uh, of course. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the synopsis of project development in Python. Yep. And guys, if you're wondering, Tech Bytes is a multi-course program. So on this Friday, we're going to be having our video gaming hour, which we were talking about previously. We're, we're going to be playing uh, Among Us. Uh, I know Chase already has a master plan down to nail down Joe. We'll see how that goes down. But we're going to be playing Among Us, talking about how the game was made as well. And then every Monday, we got our algorithm programming course, where we solve problems. We have a daily problem. We draw it out, envision how to solve it, and then we actually code it out. So we have a bunch of fun there as well. And we hope to get you guys there, too. So without any further ado, let's get to today's uh, festivities. For the new people, guys, my name is Rayon Sneaky. I'm a senior like Lavdi at Conan High School. Uh, both of us have been taking comp sci classes for some time now and uh, love this idea of being able to code and share this knowledge. And just like Rayon said, my name is Lavdi and I'm a senior at Conan High School and uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be a teacher at Tech Bytes. <laughs> Looks like Joe already has a plan down as well. And it'd be interesting to see how this Friday rolls around. But before we can get there, let's start off with today. That being, we're going to do a quick recap, guys, about our code, which we added last week for our mastermind project, going over what steps one and two did, uh, doing a quick little discussion, recapping, making sure that we are all on the same page. That discussion is going to be led by you guys. And then start coding and working on this week's code, making more, prog making more progress. And hopefully in the next uh, one or two weeks, we can finish this project out and move to the next one. Yep. And um, I believe uh, Rayon did have the code on, on the screen before we started, but I'm just going to paste the Google Classroom code in the chat. And um, QAF7IBJ. Uh, if you just go to Google Classroom um, and put this code in, uh, you'll be able to get all of the video links as well as the code links. Um, that we will be going over um, for the next weeks. Oh yeah, no capital Q. <laughs> That's just um, <laughs> autocorrect, but. Yeah. All right, so um, what is Project Mastermind? Well, um, as I said before, I touched upon this a little bit. Um, it's, it's a game, an old game. Actually, in fact, since we have so many um, new people this time, maybe we can play a working version of this game really quick to start off. It's not like we've played this many times before, but nah. you be able to give me sharing permissions. I wonder if Pythons just want a computer because they think because they want to code with Python. <laughs> All right, so I have the, um, I, I'm not gonna show you guys the code right now, but um, the code is here, a flash of the code, but <laughs> um, here's the running project. And uh, first step, guess the four digit number. Any guesses? Five, four, three, one. Five, four, three, one, okay, five, four, three, one. We enter that. Um, that would've been kind of funny if I got it right. The numbers in your input match, enter next choice. 
So we know uh, the, the way the, pro the, the, uh, the game mastermind works is we know that five is not at the first place, four is not at the second place, three is not at the third place, and one is not at the fourth place. So maybe try nine, eight, seven, six. And that would that works. oh, wow, what a lucky guess. <laughs> So uh, it, it turns out eight is at the second place and six is at the fourth place. All we have to do is guess the next two numbers, which are not nine, five, seven, or three. So any guesses? It would have been kind of funny if I got it on my first try. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, four, eight, nine, um, five, six. Oh, wow. Okay, so first digit is four. Um, it says not quite the number, but you did guess three digits correct. Also, four, eight, six. In your input were correct. I'm sorry? Four, eight, okay. six, six. All right. Four, eight, six, six. Let's try that. Not quite. Four, eight. So we know that um, three, seven, five, and six aren't um, the third digit. So four, eight, let's say, let's try one, six. One. Oh my God! Okay, so yeah, you've been you've become a mastermind. Um, and remember, if you guys if you guys remember the first time we played this, we it took us fourteen tries. Fourteen. The second time, yeah, the second time we played it, it took us twelve tries, and then third time, well, five tries. We have actually become masterminds. <laughs> but um, the the goal for this uh, little game, or I mean, presentation was um, to show you guys what mastermind, like, what project we're trying to make. And um, in, uh, in like 10-ish minutes, we'll see how far we've gone and we will code a little bit uh, to, towards our goal into making this project. All right, and before we do that, um, we will review a couple of terms and learn some stuff and then code. <laughs> Exactly, guys. So for those of us who are new and for those who are coming back as well, last week we made a bunch of progress on our mastermind game. We remember the second week we outlined all of our code. We made notes, took notes, make sure that we had a game plan going into the project, right? And then last week- Get a yeah. game plan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. But um, yes, Chase, I think we all feel like masterminds after that, after that play. But remember last week, guys, we got done with our steps one and two. We had this in a five-step plan, and steps one and two essentially were the ways for us to generate a random four-digit number and for us to check if the user correctly guessed the number. Moreover, we created some functions, organized our code, and speaking about all of these terms, since we do have some new people, I think there's a good idea and a good way for us to recap and make sure we all understand what these new things mean. So... Okay, so um, the way we will review this time is since we have so many new people and returners, uh, we'll have a little um, activity where uh, we're going to send you guys to a breakout room and you guys are going to talk about, um, how about in the first, uh, let's say one minute, um, first time we send you guys to breakout rooms, um, talk about what functions are. Now, this should be pretty easy because we did talk about them last time. Remember, we um, broke off into breakout rooms and then talked about it, came back, and then reviewed it again. So first time we go out to breakout rooms, talk about functions. You can use the internet, um, use each other to discuss um, what you remember and uh, what they are, basically. Yep, and just give me one moment while I'm getting this set up. And just a heads up, the second time we uh, go off on breakout rooms, uh, we're going to talk about what modules are. But first time functions. <laughs> Alrighty, so the rooms are opening up guys. So once you get the notification, uh, head on over and we'll do this for a couple minutes. Here we go. All right, so hopefully you and your group have discussed what the random module and a function did. And, uh, you know, we'll be putting it into more application as we go on today. Oh, all right, see ya. See ya. Did you want to? All right, and just a quick recap about the random module. All right, so um, as we talked in, uh, 
Tracy, okay. Um, as we talked in breakout room two, that's where um, I believe with Rishi, Chase, and Tejasvi, um, we talked about like what a module is. It's basically a set of um, books in a bookcase that you need to write an essay as I stole from Rishi, but that's a great analogy you had. And specifically a random module is a module that handles randomness. So random numbers uh, and a couple of more, um, I mean, functions uh, re related to random. And basically what it does is it makes our lives easier. Instead of us having to write thousands of lines of code to create a random number, because let me detour again, there is no such thing as random numbers in computer science. Um, uh, everything has a pattern. Um, even the random thoughts that you have, have a pattern. So um, going back to a random module, creating a random number um, with pattern is practically impossible, but there is a, an algorithm using math and um, pseudo random, as Rishi said, which is amazing. Um, it, the computer is um, capable of creating a, a random number. And instead of us having to write a whole, like, like thousands of lines of code for a single random number, we just call or we just look at that bookcase or um, a library and ask it, can I just borrow this functionality of yours? And we just borrow that functionality and our lives just become so much easier. Alrighty guys, so now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for, that being the coding. Before we get there real quick, just uh, outlining our goals, remember a main, um, process in coding is making sure we're focused, knowing what we want to accomplish, right? And today's goal is such. We want to make sure that we can get steps uh, three and sort of get through four as well. And those steps entail firstly prompting the user to keep on guessing. You know, just like we were playing early on, we didn't get the number on the first try, right? Well, the computer kept on asking us again and again until we got the right set of numbers. So we want to make that firstly. And then number two, we want to start comparing our guesses, looking at the individual spots, and checking if they align correctly. And if so, we'll tell the user that you got that number correct. So now let's get towards coding. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to send the link uh, to the Replit um, in the chat. So for those of you who are new, um, Replit is a way where we, um, uh, we share code just like Google Docs. Um, and you guys will be able to see as on, on your screen what I write on my screen. So that's pretty useful when we're uh, collaborating on a single project and that's what we're going to do. So, and I'm also going to share my screen. So while we are um, getting on the replit, I see one person or two people on it so far. Um, I'm just going to go over what we've done so far. So as you can see, there is a ton of documentation and that's what Rayan was talking about, how we planned out what we're going to code beforehand. And that's, again, um, one of uh, the many ways coders organize themselves. But uh, let's get started. So step one was to create a four digit random number um, that we uh, used the random module that we imported. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll repeat that. So we imported a random module we used that module and then used a function from that module to create a random number. And that, uh, we're just printing that random number just like Rishi um, did to debug uh, or while we code our, our uh, mastermind game. Um, and it works, 2711, four digit random number. Step two, uh, we checked if the string is equal to the random number on the first try. So um, if I run this, uh, suppose we don't see this and suppose we guess 9316 uh, as our guess. Yeah, we get a, an, a print saying, great, you have successfully guessed the correct answer on your first try. And that's, the, uh, that's step two of the whole project. But um, what happens if um, you don't guess the, first, uh, the correct answer on the first try? Well, that's where this else comes in because of course we were comparing our, um, the input, again, we're first converting the, the string into an int and then comparing with that number that we started off with. Um, and sorry, yeah, 
comparing that number with the correct answer that we started off with. And then if it's the same, then print, great, you have successfully guessed the correct answer. Else, um, this is where we left off last week. Print, your guess was incorrect. Now, in a real mastermind game, we have to prompt them again. And that's what we will start doing this time. Now, um, while I'm, I'm, I'm coding through this, let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. Just shout out in the middle. Um, with respect, like don't go, don't keep like shouting random stuff, but um, let me know if you guys want me to explain anything. So let's get started. Um, first, we're gonna uh, delete this this line of code because instead of printing your guess was incorrect, we have to um, start a a while loop. So inside that while loop, we're gonna have to um, say um, if if our number, the number we guessed, is not equal to the correct answer. So um, what, what this means is the same thing that um, we checked over here, but the opposite. So we have to run this while loop until until we guess the correct answer. And that's basically what this syntax is saying. But before we um, do go into that while loop and start coding inside it, we're gonna set a, a variable, a new variable equal to zero. And the CTR is going to mean, I'm just gonna document over here. CTR means um, the number of guesses. So, because if you recall, when we did play the mastermind game, it asked, so, you guess the correct answer in the following in, in in like five guesses or 12 guesses so we in order to have that functionality uh, we'll have to record our guesses and to do that we're going to have to start with uh, declaring a variable now we declared a variable and created this while loop now if you if you, if you see step three and what we planned we had to start a while loop to prompt the user to keep guessing the right number until they get it right. We started that while loop, so check mark there, but um, we still have to prompt the user to keep guessing the right, the right answer. But um, before we do that, um, there are a couple of uh, housekeeping things in coding that we have to do. So re recall this uh, CTR number, that's the number of guesses. Since we um, already have one guess over here, uh, we're going to just add CTR plus equals CTR is equal to CTR plus one. And what this does is it adds to CTR, adds one to CTR. Now, once we do have that, um, what we're going to do is we basically have to compare. Now, I, this is, I'm just document, who's following me? <laughs> Um, I, I'm basically documenting code. Um, that means I'm, I'm writing notes of what the code will do. So I'm gonna compare the guess. So that's a string of four characters with the correct answer. And recall when we did uh, play that game, it says you got th two of the four numbers correct or three of the four numbers correct. So in order to count those numbers, we have to add another counter variable. So a counter variable basically counts the number of times something is correct or something is wrong. So we're just going to um, set a counter variable equal to zero for that. Now, once we do, uh, I'm just going to add a note in here. All right, so once we do have that, just clean up the code. What we're gonna do is, let's see. All right, um, now here's um, one of the, the hardest steps, uh, I guess, of step number three. And that's where um, we have to compare our guess so we turn that into an integer over here, n. So n is an integer right now. And we have to compare that to the correct answer. But 
you see, if we have two integers and we compare them, there's only one way to compare them. And that's if it's the same or not. What if we want to compare each digit of that of, of those two numbers? Well, well, we'll have to use substring. And substring is um, a kind of an advanced um, topic, but not really. Uh, it's just basically strings like words. We're going to convert the integer number, the guess that we have, into a, uh, a string. So we're just going to say n is equal to strn. So what we did over here, int, was the opposite of what we're doing over here. We're converting that integer into a string. So just going to add another note. n is now a string. All right, so we got that step done. Now, what do we do? Let's see. Now, we also have to make sure that correct answer is also a string. And we're going to do that as well. So correct answer, no space, is equal to str. And I just created a new variable instead of um, setting the same thing to a string. Um, all right, so I created a new variable that's a string, um, but has the same value as correct answer. Exactly. And guys, as Lobby's going through this, just to make sure that we are all on the same page, um, and we do have some new people here. So when we're talking about like this uh, line number 32, where Lobby is saying our variable end, which holds a value, is setting it equal to the string version of the previous value of end, that's making sure that instead of it being like a number, like 5, 10, 15, 20, it's a word. So we can sort of dissect it and like comprehend it as a word. Uh, this way we can uh, perform, Lobby's gonna be doing some conditionals, making sure we can compare it correctly. And if we take a look at line 35, it's the same thing. We're making sure that we're converting our number to a string, sort of like comparing apples to oranges. You can't really do that, right? You gotta compare apples to apples. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. Yep. All right. So, and we're going to see that in a for loop that we're going to use. So now we have both our guess as a string and the correct answer as a string. Um, now, finally, one more, one more thing. Um, we're going to have a, a correct guess equal to, and this is where um, we add in arrays. Um, one more vocab word that we have been looking into in both algorithmic programming course and project development. Um, but it's basically an array of strings and we're gonna have those strings as X's. And if you guys recall, um, for today, we kept uh, do uh, the steps as I think three and three and a half. And the reason why is um, this step actually has um, way more like mini steps inside it. That's why um, we will probably end over here for today. And, but before we do end, Let's just review what I did because we initialized a lot of variables that we haven't used so far, um, but they are still important. Um, and okay, so let's review what we did. Uh, and this time I will be asking you guys what each line of code does because I've been going through what it does before and I just don't wanna like keep lecturing you guys. So let's start with line one. What does line one do? It imports a random number. Close, but not quite. It imports the random module. And then why don't, <laughs> why don't you uh, answer uh, what line eight does? Because that kind of goes into what you answered for line one. That gives the, um, that's the range for the random number or random module. 
Yeah, so basically you were, you call that random okay, you call that random module that you imported and then ask it to create a random number with a range of 10,000 or 1000 to 10,000 excluding uh, the number 10,000. And then um, line 9 is not part of the the code that we've that we are writing for the game. It's just so that we know what the number is. So I'm going to skip that. Now line 18. What does line 18 do? This is from last week, but anyone can answer. Uh, line 18 is saying that uh, the input is an integer, setting the input as an integer. Uh-huh. And then the input is just the first guess of the player. What is your first guess for this four-digit number? All right, so we got two out of two. Um, what about line 20? Again, uh, no fear zone. It, it's okay if you're wrong. That's why we're going through this uh, at a slower pace. So everyone is on the same track and all of us understand. That's for if you actually get the correct answer, that's like the whole thing for that, yep. the whole code. Yeah, so what step two um, was, so basically we check if the N, that's our guess that we um, set, is equal to the correct answer. So if all four digits are equal to all four digits, if they are, print great. You have successfully guessed the correct answer on your first try. Else, else, what do we do? What does line 25 do? Come on, guys, it's right here. It sets the number of guesses that you, like it says the number of guesses that you've done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, the number of guesses so far, it sets equal to zero. But if you follow the code, just uh, two lines below it, it adds one to the no total number of guesses, which is true because we guessed um, what the number was one time so far. All right, so I did skip to line 27, but line 26 is very crucial. What does that do? Hint, hint, it's a loop. What's that for? That's for if it's the like, that's while you ha are trying to get the correct answer, right? That's what it is. That's for mm -hmm. let that's the loop for a while you're guessing or something. Yeah, you're, you're getting there. Any, any, anyone want to add to that? So is, is, is it like, so as long as you don't get the correct answer, do what is below? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, straight on that. Yeah. So it basically says while the, the guess is not equal to correct answer, do the following. And that's where we do the rest of the code. And the reason why, or the way we know that um, we're doing the rest or we're running the rest of the code inside this while loop is because of the indentation. And for we, we've I stressed this out before, but Python is very sensitive to where you indent. So if you if you can see in in this if statement, both of these lines are indented while this else is not. Again, in, it, inside this else, everything is indented. And then again, inside this while, everything is indented one more time. So. Whenever you code in Python, indentation is very crucial. All right, back to what we were explaining. Now, I did explain line 27 as we just add to the number of guesses we have. Um, what about line 28? That's for, you wanna go? That's fine, no, I can. No, you can. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it says. Uh, Jessica, you want to? Yeah, me? sorry. <laughs> it says the uh, how many of the numbers that you guessed are correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So since this is the first time we're setting this variable equal to a number, we're declaring it. So like we're initialized. So we're saying, we're telling the computer set this name, this variable equal to something. That something doesn't matter right now since we just set it equal to zero, but it will in the later lines that we do write. 
So that's that. Um, now this part, what does this do? First of all, what is n? A variable. What kind of variable? What is it? It's the store? input. It's the input from the user. Mm -hmm. And then what kind is it? It's an integer. Yes, sir. So it's an integer right now, but what does it become after this line? A string. Yes. And it still stays the same, um, whatever guess we put. So for example, if I guess one, two, three, four, it'll stay one, two, three, four. But instead of um, n being one, two, three, four, it's going to be n is equal to, with quotations, one, two, three, four. This right here, I'm just going to write, this is a string. And this over here is an integer. So that's about it. Just last two lines of code. Um, bear with me. Correct answer is string. What does this do? Line 38. So this is just uh, saying what the correct answer is. So you're converting the correct answer string as a string of the correct answer. Yes. So, you're, so you're setting it up so that you can compare those two eventually. Next class. Yep. Perfect. And last line, guys. Um, 39. Line 39. What does that do? Uh, this is a dictionary, I believe, or I think it's, yeah, so it's a dictionary of the correct guesses. Um, close, but not quite. So it's an array. A dictionary is, um, goes in this manner. So if I say dict is equal to, you have, I believe it's in braces, and then you have, like, index one, and then colon a value. Okay. So this is a dictionary. Um, but this what we have correct guess, that's an array. And it's basically an array of the guesses um, that we will be kind of showing um, if any of these digits are right um, from the user's guess. But yeah, that's about it. Um, what we've done so far. Um, I'm not going to run the code because we're not finished with this while loop, it will probably break. But that's about it for today. Exactly. And that last thing, guys, which we were showing off that array, remember, it's a way for us to hold multiple variables in one area. And today, we're holding all of those uh, of our guesses. It's like lobby at 4x's to show that we haven't guessed any number correctly at this moment. So that takes us till the end of week four of our product development course, guys. Thanks so much for coming out. Hopefully, you guys had a good time. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys next week as well. We're going to be continuing to work on Mastermind. In the next two weeks, we can definitely get it over with and start our next project. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Remember, this Friday, we have our video gaming hour at 4.30, playing Among Us. Hope to get you guys here. But other than that, guys, take care. See you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye. And then, Richie, if you want.